NBC News exclusive, An Assassin Speaks, a stunning turning point in the Middle East, a mother of seven murdered, accused of betraying her people. Gulf Divide, as the U.S. prepares for war with Iraq, a key ally says, not so fast. In depth, pushed to the limit, why are these World War II airplanes still doing the dangerous work of fighting fires? An NBC News investigation. And the Dr. Phil phenomenon. Is it okay to hug a cop? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> he's Oprah's favorite, and now he's got his own show. Why do millions go for his tough love approach? From NBC News World Headquarters in New York, this is NBC Nightly News with Tom Brokaw. Substituting tonight, Stone Phillips. Good evening. The explosive issue of Iraq remains front and center tonight. We'll have more on the rationale for a U.S. strike and the resistance voiced today by America's closest Arab ally. But we begin with another story out of the Middle East and a new form of violence not seen even in that part of the world. For the first time, a Palestinian woman, a widow and mother of seven, has been executed by her own people for allegedly collaborating with the Israelis. No trial, no appeal, no mercy. NBC News has spoken to the man who says he ordered her execution and to the man who claims to have carried it out. We have also spoken to the teenage boy who says he was tortured into doing the unimaginable, identifying the woman, his own mother, as an informant. Here's NBC's Martin Fletcher. This is a story of vengeance. Children without a mother, not only suddenly orphans, but outcasts for something their mother may have done. Ikhlas Kuli, a 35-year-old widow, supported her seven children by selling vegetables at this market in the West Bank town of Tulkam. Last Friday night, her 17-year-old son Bakir was abducted from his home by masked armed men, members of the Al-Aqsa Martyrs Brigade, a militia close to Yasser Arafat. Several hours later, they returned for his mother. They accused her of being an Israeli collaborator, charging she spied on a Palestinian fighter and gave away his hideaway to the Israelis who later killed him. She was forced to confess. She says, now I want to tell everyone, do not collaborate with Israel. Then they killed her. They brought her here to the market center at three o'clock in the morning, shot her three times, twice in the heart, leaving her dead. A warning to the rest of the town, don't collaborate with Israel. But was her confession true? No one really knows, for the only evidence against her came from her own son, Bakir. And today, when NBC News talked to him, he denied it, saying he was tortured into betraying his mother. They whipped me, he said, with electric wire. I would have told them anything to make them stop. As he was defending his mother, neighbors barged in, told him to stop lying arguing with him in the street. He wants him to tell the truth, what he told the people who tortured him, that his mother is a collaborator. But we had another question. Who could kill a mother of seven on the basis of such flimsy evidence? Today, we went deep inside the Tulkam refugee camp to find this man, the head of the Al-Aqsa Brigade. He told us bluntly, I ordered the killing of Ikhlas Kuli. And this man, he pulled the trigger. We had to punish this woman who killed innocent people. But this is a woman with seven children. Why kill her? Because collaborators are the greatest danger. If I am killed next week, it will be because of a collaborator. The people are so angry at Ikhlas, now her children are afraid they'll have to leave their home. And they will always be haunted by the question, was their mother a collaborator? All they know for sure is, now they're alone in the world. Martin Fletcher, NBC News, still calm in the West Bank. Potential U.S. military action in Iraq was the main topic today at the president's ranch in Texas. The visiting Saudi ambassador had some tough words for the president. Here's NBC's David Gregory. Saudi Ambassador Prince Bandar, officials say, brought toughly worded opposition from the kingdom that neither the Saudis nor their allies in the Arab world would support a U.S.-led war against Iraq. Yesterday, the vice president stepped up the administration's case against Saddam, saying his ouster can't wait because he may soon acquire nuclear weapons. Today, however, Saudi officials say the U.S. is rushing, and they shouldn't count on Saudi's support, especially the use of key air bases, as they did during the first Gulf War. Could it be that the whole world is wrong and a few in the United States who are pushing for war are right? We doubt it. 
Sources familiar with Saudi concerns say the kingdom questions whether the Bush administration has the stomach to suffer heavy casualties in its quest to topple Saddam. Another concern? Will the U.S. stay behind to help rebuild Iraq the way it is rebuilding Afghanistan? If the U.S. falls short, they fear, it's the Saudis and others in the region who would face either Saddam's wrath or the destabilizing effect of a power vacuum in Iraq. And there's the ongoing Israeli-Palestinian conflict, which Saudi officials say must be resolved first. The Saudis weren't the only ones cautioning restraint. Today, Egyptian President Mubarak warned of a, quote, 